Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jasmine. I'm Vanessa. And here are our two cents on this week's hot topics. We're gonna jump right into it. Let's go. Big story this week, Pepsi. Pepsi. Unfortunately, they had a rough week. Uh, you probably saw the tone deaf ad that um, was playing. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't. They took it down. They apologized. It was rough. But at this point, social media has shown you this ad with Kendall Jenner and a can of Pepsi that solved all the world's problems. Had they not given the police officer the can, I think I could have handled what was going on. It just it just went all bad at that point. And shame on you, Pepsi. Like, I think this is the reason why I feel like you need to have more multicultural voices in the room when it's time to make decisions and then you won't have this kind of debacle. Right. I think my bigger issue was that the it wasn't clear what message they were trying to send. I know Pepsi released a statement saying they're looking for global unity and for us all to get on the same page and X, Y, and Z. But in the in the visual, everyone's protesting, everyone's marching, and we don't know why. I feel like they had some vague signs they were holding like, peace and yay and like it felt like coachella it felt like a party it didn't feel like a protest like these people are being hurt being tear gas beaten you know police are showing up in riot gear to these protests that are very serious and you got kendall out here hey hey, hey. pepsi <laughs> speaking of cola oh segue segue <laughs> or down under animals. Uh. <laughs> Cola, koala, I see where you're going. You see where I'm going. Koala, kangaroo. kangaroo. That's, we're on the same wavelength. Yes, I get there you. we go. <laughs> Kangaroos ended up in Detroit though, thanks to Mike Epps. Yeah. A kangaroo ended up. Just, yeah, just a kangaroo. Just a kangaroo. Look, so. I'm from Michigan and there are, I can't think of one reason <laughs> that a kangaroo needs to stop by the D to say what up to a room full of people there for a Mike Epps comedy show. Mike, what is wrong? What is going on? I really feel like this might be the beginning of a breakdown, meltdown of Mike Epps. Like really? I feel like I feel a little Cat Williams foreshadowing. <laughs> These kinds of actions kind of si signal something else that's going on or could be going on in his life. He's not making rational decisions. Like why do you have this kind of wild animal on stage during your comedy set? Like it made no sense. I don't think this is a breakdown. I think this is just another instance of him not being that funny. I mean, call it what it is. Look, Mike Epps was great in, in what, Next Friday? You know, he's had some moments. People love his comedy, but you know, he ain't always hit. This just seemed like he thought it was gonna be funny until that like, kangaroo punched him in the face and he had to take a, a stage left. Like he had to exit stage left because it just wasn't funny. I hope the kangaroo knocks some sense into you, Mike. You can't be bringing <laughs> kangaroos on your stage. PETA's mad. All of the animal yes. lovers around the world are upset. Thankfully he apologized and you can move on. Do something else a little more positive. With and funny. Mind. Forget <laughs> positive, <laughs> just do something funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, something not so funny. Oh. Yeah, Demel B, as you guys all know, is going through the process of divorcing her husband. Um, Shady Steven, Belafonte. Oh, Shady, Shady, Shady Belafonte. Belafonte, sorry. Which, Lord have mercy, I am so happy that you reminded me that that is not his real last name. No. Girl, you should have known when you married him, he was a fraud and a fake and a phony. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, his last name used to be something else and the word on the street is that he changed it to Belafonte so that in the entertainment industry, he'd have some cachet. You Fool automatically me. assume that he's related somehow to Harry Belafonte, although he is not. And yeah, fooled a lot of people. Look, look well he didn't fool Melanie's sister. She's very upset y'all that he has been putting his hands on her sister for eight years. My thing is though, Danielle, Love you dearly. I loved your Beyonce to the left, to the left reference, but where were you at, you know, a couple of years ago, years ago, when he was putting his hands on your yeah. sister? Like, you could have used the same platform to speak out because I feel like that might have helped her push the button to divorce him because she's been going through, sounds like some dark, dark some years. years of craziness and terror. Look, I get that side of it. You know, for me, I would have salonged his ass. Like I would have been in the elevator whooping off in him. You don't touch my family. But when it comes to her sister, she was very open about the fact that he threatened them too. And he 
threatened to keep her from them, threatened to hurt them, threatened to hurt Melanie Moore. Like he just, he's not a good guy. This man needs to be arrested. So if you got any more receipts and any more tea, tell it. And on that note, <laughs> it's a wrap for me and Jay. See y'all next week. <laughs> Why, why are you looking disappointed? <laughs> <laughs>